In previous lessons, we've shown you how to build date dimensions a couple of different ways. One of those was using SQL scripts. Uh, this one, so we used some CTEs to automate the maintenance of a date dimension. And then in another video, we had a lesson on creating a date dimension table in just about any version of Excel, just using Excel formulas. Let me show you a third method. If you are using Excel 2013, there's a new feature within Excel called Apps for Office. And Apps for Office allows third-party developers to put together HTML5 and JavaScript code to add really dynamic and rich functionality into Excel. One of the apps I really like is this Create Time Dimension. And you see I've used it already, so it shows up in my menu. But if I hadn't used it at all before, I could actually go search for it. So if I just click here and put in Date Dimension. I'll flip over to a website and over here on office, Microsoft.com will show me a couple of things that reference date dimension. The create date dimension is one I want. Obviously, a lot of other people like it too. So Stefan Johansson put this together and he's not even charging for it, so it's free. Some apps may have a price associated with them, but this one doesn't. And if you want to add this to Excel, you just click this add button here. It will require you to log in with your Microsoft ID. and then it gives you the instructions on where to find it. So now if I go back to Excel, again, Apps for Office, Create Time Dimension, and what this will do is bring up this cool tool panel on the right-hand side, and I just have some driver variables that I put in. So let's say I wanted my date to go back to, I don't know, let's say 2001, and I want to go forward to the year 2020, let's say, and I can choose from languages, English or Swedish. I, uh, I can't read Swedish, so I'll stick with English. What day the week would start on, and in the U.S., we, for some reason, like to start on Sundays. And then if I just click Insert into Beginning Cell, the app is going to calculate all this stuff for me, doing a lot of the things we might do in formulas if we were doing it ourselves. And it will create a couple of primary keys for me, really, an ID column and date column. Then to use this, maybe I just want to add this to a Power Pivot model, so I'll go ahead and just... Click on the Power Pivot ribbon, Add to Data Model. And that will just automatically call up the Power Pivot add-in and add that sheet as a table to my data model. Of course, the next thing that I'd have to do is mark it as the date column. So I'll click on the Design part of the ribbon, mark that as the date table. It'll ask me which column has a date in it. And click OK. And that's it. We've created a date dimension for Power Pivot. That's probably the easiest method you're going to find. Remember, you have to have Excel 2013 in order for this to work. But if you do, go ahead and install that add-in, and that's going to be about the easiest thing that you can find to do this. I hope you found that helpful, and if so, click the Like button to let us know.